guys can share the love. Amen, amen. The class is open. Now is open to the public. It's a free class. And all we ask is if you could just purchase your book. Amen. And the, we're going to get started. Father, we just thank you. Hallelujah, 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 Lord. We just give you the honor, the glory, and the praise unto you, oh God. We thank you, God, that it's none like you, oh God. Can y'all hear me? Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Father, we just thank you. We ask you, oh God, to just sit, allow your glory to sit on us this evening, oh God. I pray, Father, even now as we begin to divide the word, oh God, I be, I pray, Father, that you give us more and more of your wisdom and knowledge, amen, oh God, to just be able to soak in your presence on tonight, oh God. And I pray for everyone that's coming in. I pray safe, a head of protection and safety around them as they travel, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. I pray, Father, even for more revelation of you, oh God. Allow us to hunger and thirst after your righteousness, night 11 before God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. I pray, Father, that breakthrough, oh God, I pray that people will get delivered, oh God. I pray that your chains are being broken right now as we speak in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. I pray, Father, that healing, oh God, in deliverance is the children's bread, oh God in the mighty name of Jesus and I plead the blood of Jesus amen of our minds in the name of Jesus in Jesus name we pray amen and amen God bless God bless well good evening good evening everyone hallelujah hallelujah amen so thank you hey good evening good evening to everyone amen all our first timers, we we want to welcome you as well. Amen. Just wanted to let you know if you want to uh, put your mic on and may if you don't have a mic, then you can also uh, communicate with me with the chat. Uh, just put all your comments and the uh, questions in the chat. Uh, and uh, if you do have questions, you can also unmute and also uh, uh, raise your hand or unmute. Uh, as well. Okay, so the name of the book uh, we've been on, this is actually our fifth week. It's called Destroy, Destroy the Works of the Enemy, and it's with um, Irish and John Digo. Um, Liz, if you don't mind putting that on uh, down as well, so they can know that this is the book that we're coming out of, and they can order the book. The book is uh, under $5 if you're getting it like on uh, uh, I think it's Thrifty and a uh, Thrif Thrifty and Abe Books has it, and also um, you can get it uh, on Kindle. Absolutely, Amazon. You can get it on Kindle, which will be more uh, uh, quicker. You can get it the same day. You can get it like literally if you order it now on Kindle, boom, you'll be able to follow us through in the class as well. Amen. And um, praise God. So. We're going to go ahead and get started. Amen. Amen. So um, we're going to talk about a last week's lesson. So last week's lesson was uh, we, we talked about, um, who is, who's on? we talked about uh, the battle of your mind. Okay. So we talked about the battle, the battle, the battle for your mind. And we also talked about the flesh and the evil spirit. So if you, um, have the notes list for last week's lesson uh, and also for the bonus notes that I have given you. Go ahead and unmute and let me know uh, what you have, uh, Liz. Thank you. God I, bless. I got you, beautiful apostle. Um, like you started out with defensive spiritual warfare, the battle in our mind. Ephesians 6, 16. Ephesians 6, 16. Shield of faith to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. Types of forms, temptation, deception accusation spiritual warfare when it's dark then like temptation is the gratification of the flesh to disobey god's revealed word satan cannot play freely cannot play fair in that how satan manipulated eve and that sin gives an enemy a foothold in our lives ephesians 4 27 ephesians 4 27 and that how anger leads to a foothold and anger allows an open door and that God's mercy is rich and new daily and that cannot give the devil a foothold in our lives and that sometimes we get so angry we don't even care and that sometimes we don't think we have to deal with the consequences 
and then we go like go to a quiet room revamp out like just regroup and that um then okay anger's like a double-edged sword words said can't be taken back if satan wants more legal ground expect temptations to come and that quickly turn from the sins repent so we can be forgiven that the legal ground can be removed matthew 26 41 matthew 26 41 and that the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak indifference and opposition indifference of opposite uh, is the opposite of god's design james 4 and 4 james 4 and 4 that the friend of the world is an enemy of god not the flesh and that the flesh is like the gluttony or any like sexual perversion and things of that nature like addiction and that the flesh can be corrupted by these things disorder and passion john 2 15 to 17 john 2 15 and 17 and then the things of this world are temporary focus on the things that are eternal lust of the eyes lust of the flesh and the pride of life then that the world is passing away and that only love for the world it, it is more above God than check ourselves and we must be about our father's business and that God abides forever eternal and that we should be focused on the things of God and then the things of God last forever. People put to people put the world above God and not only call on God when in trouble and that the devil is a real person fallen angel and that the father of lies and who deceive believers. He is already deceiving non-believers his job and done you cannot compromise and that there is no in between john 8 44 john 8 44 and that there is no truth in him and that he's father of lies and that prayer is the most secret weapon you have matthew 6 13 matthew 6 13 art of war get to know your enemy knowing the enemy is critical in battle romans 4 21 to 23 Romans 4, 21 to 23, and Romans 7, 21, to, well, Romans 7, 21, 20, my bad. And that the prisoner of law is sin, Ephesians 4, 22, Ephesians 4, 22. Put off your old self. It is important to renew your mind and learn to recognize temptation, the trap that the enemy sets up for us. And that each person is tempted when he is lurking and enticed by his own desires. Silence the flesh daily and irrigate. James 1, 14 to 16, James 1, 14 to 16, open doors, Satan brings reinforcement, you can go deeper and deeper in sin, and know that knock on the door and begin to rebuke it, depression rebuke it, and we have the power and authority, and that desires give birth to sin, and you talk about just while blow is, um, like, blow it out before it gets in the infant stage, and People that deal with the spirit of Jezebel come from the spirit of abandonment and rejection, relationship, wages of sin is death, and that the further and further you are getting connection, disconnection from God, now in the enemy's territory, and we have to live holy, then prevention, preventional to act. We have to guard our eye gates and what you have been delivered from. It is important that we okay, waken in here in the open windows and portals. And don't compromise in how you talk about Joseph and the Potiphar's house and avoid things that tempt you. We got to submit to God and resist the devil. Submitting God and there is and that help, there is no fear of God. And that the importance of meditating, meditating on God's will, fulfilling up you with more ammunition, no shooting the blanks. Quote the scripture right back. Matthew 4, 5 through 7. Matthew 4, 5 to 7. And Ephesians 6, 17. Ephesians 6, 17. Helmet of salvation, deliverance, and that we are more vulnerable when we are weak, even fall into temptation when you are worn out and you are weak into the deception of the enemy and ask the Lord for extra strength to resist temptation. Psalm 62, 1 through 2, Psalm 62, 1 through 2, and that there is always a way to escape. 1 Corinthians 10, 13, 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, that God is faithful and that will not allow you to suffer to be tempted above what you are. But with temptation comes to make a make makes a way of an escape deception and that's what's last of my notes and all i got okay amen amen i think lisa having problem with connecting her audio or mic so uh a lot of times we have to reboot depends on what device we on uh so i'll try to text her and let her know um 
Okay, so what we're doing, Fran is early. What time is it? Fran, you, you're not at home, sweetie. You home? No, ma'am, not yet. Right. <laughs> is she running like Forrest Gump? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so what what we do, uh, we kind of go over the, you know, last week's lesson, kind of like give a uh, recap a little bit on that. And that's what she did, gave uh, last week's lesson where we talked about um, the two things um, was uh, the principle, I'm sorry, not the principle, but to, um, oh, the flesh and the evil spirits and also the battle uh for your mind so i was going to actually wait to fran to see if she had the notes for that but we're going to go ahead and jump into the video so if you got kelly if you got a chance to watch the video but i didn't i didn't know if, um on the email i mean i'm sorry i think i text you so on the text it was said like seven i think it was like uh number seven so number seven was the actual video that we were going to do. I'm sorry if I did, I miscommunicated that. And the video that we're going to talk about tonight is called, uh, was two of them. One was the Freedom from Oppression by Pastor Tony Evans. And the uh, second video was called How, How the Devil Works by Ricky uh, Ren Renner. So um, re re if you guys got, the chance to watch that either one of those videos. I love to hear what your spill of and what you learn from that. Uh, those videos. Come on and unmute if you will be so kind. Okay. You want both of them or just one? Both of them or just one. Uh, just do just do one, and then I'm gonna I'm gonna see if uh, Fran can do the other one. Okay. okay. I just um, let me know which one you're doing. One. Which I'll do. I'm doing the Freedom from Oppression from Dr. Tony Evans. Good. Okay. Okay. Freedom, release from uh, ill, ill alignment, bondage, and that you can and that you cannot experience what you were created to be. A whole nation, freedom, clarion call, and divine one. Freedom is God's gift to mankind, calling under God, and apply its various life, where people are still being hostage. Freedom from oppression. Exodus two, twenty three. In Exodus 2.23, and signed because of bondage, rise up from bondage. What is oppression? And that is oppression is an imposed domination of another person to control them, hindering them from operating, hindering them from operating for the person that they're meant to be. And that hindrances and that seals and that controls you. Potential or limited restriction, God restriction, God given human potential, not free, not free. And that men try to be God in your life and that men oppose a restriction. It holds you hostage and then stops the fulfillment of God's purpose in our life. And then by God and for God, it's a hideous sin, comes in all level. Political oppression, economic oppression, and haves holding and haves not. Assigned to economic class, racial oppression, domestic oppression, emotional or physical violence, solely not limited. Children oppressed by parents in a way of control and pain, religious oppression, and that men have the freedom not to believe the spiritual oppression where the devil runs in your life, and that demon cohorts got to do it this way, and that sin gets addictive. He is controlling us, Exodus 1 and 8, Exodus 1 and 8, and that, that taskmasters, and that compared to rigorous work in all kinds of labor, imposed afflictions, compelled to make life better in all terms of oppression under thumbs of evil no release to be who god created us to be to do whatever we god wants us to do it takes to supply to whatever it takes forced bring us under control to support his kingdom intimidated by israel and that the king was intimidated by israel and he oppressed him like a um, political uh, oppression and that political, the press becomes free. They will become greater than the God and lose God, one of them, than them. He was, will no longer control them, made life hard to hold back and hold down. Egypt, Israel lives are bit, bitter. I know how they were being treated. Extended, external wanted to be delivered. That, um, a bondage, get up, get out of the pain, Israel. People who lived under bondage wake up to pain. Somebody's bigger and stronger than the, the pressure. 
the oppression, rebellion, thinking, beggar, and cried. They cry out to God. They cry out to God, and they heard him. The kings of Egypt died. Don't make the don't make them God. Don't make the government your God. And the worst thing you can do is make the government your God. Like I just said the things you look to save you can hold you hot and hold you hostage and oppress you. We must go higher. And that God God heard their groaning. And that a covenant is a divine agreement. And covenant is a blessing. And that God has a covenant with their ancestors and to bless those who bless us and curse them who curse out that they were against God and that there is somebody bigger than our problems and that God is bigger than our problems. They remember God. They remembered the promise and that remember the covenant and that the, and that things can create a stronghold in the mind. You can tell oppressed people by the way they think, beating down on how you think and that breaking the spirit and that oppression wants to keep you dumb and about information. And that information changes how we view ourselves and that God offers freedom. And in the name of Christianity, we keep ourselves miserable. And anything the Bible told allows to limit, like cults and stuff. Exodus 14 and 10, Exodus 14 and 10, they ask to deliver and oppression makes you afraid to be free. They just got used to slavery, that slave and secure, free and uncertain. And that they have to take on that new level of responsibility freedom, responsibility, new levels, of responsibility, and that things you get used to the repression and that oppressed people used to be under, used or used to low self-worth, patient, and that oppressive language, oppressive mentality that doesn't give us the mindset of freedom and that God offers freedom, Exodus 3 and 7, Exodus 3 and 7, that God sees the affliction of his people, freedom from sin, and that sin of others that imposed on you as freedom from sin. God is aware of your pain and deliver the pain good in the good land. And that freedom starts with God. When God comes into the equation, God is going to talk freedom. Luke 4 and Luke 4. You have and you have to attack oppression. Bring God into the equation. Cry out to God and that God come into agreement with God, you and him. And it never accept oppression and never accept what's never acceptable. Never oppose others the way you would want to be oppressed. In the civil war, and you talk about like the spiritual war and like how they, he did a civil war and spiritual war together and that God will deliver the oppressed prayer of the people. Let them know that God was working on the deliverance and God was preparing the man. And that when they cry out to God and that God delivered them and as they cried out, he was preparation. And don't marginalize God. And that when God is out of the equation, oppression. That dumb means dominate and that don't look to human solutions and that we have to pray to God and that. Okay, and earthly interference for, okay, heavenly interference. Okay, prayers like, okay. And God intervened and God changes things and that progress to change things. Legacy is free, leave a legacy and not be free to be a fool. Freedom is to do what I'm supposed to do, not that. And that great legacy and, okay. Free to pursue God's calling in your life, not to live under oppression and that and vocal mess things up. And I am who God says I am and that I can trust the maker and that in the creation that he, we are God who says that I am, and we are blood bought and don't accept oppression. Those are my notes. I Amen. Okay. Praise God. All right. Fran, you, you, what time is it? All right, so it's 23. She's, you, I don't think she's at home yet. Give Y'all, me like four more minutes. <laughs> don't, uh, it, hopefully it's not snow in there because she gets, she stays in a whole different state. She's in Colorado, so they've been dealing with snow. So, all right, so any questions pertaining to tonight's lesson? We're going to, again, like I said, we're going to talk about um, the uh well the actual we're gonna read tonight about the what we what we're gonna read about the principles of satan's oppression and that's what a little bit she shared about as well and then the works of the devil so we're gonna um talk about that um in, in the next about the next 20 more minutes but i'm gonna go ahead and start with the notes uh, this is a time to get your note pen and your paper ready, guys, because I tell you, I like good, I, I like the fact, thank you, Liz, uh, 
uh, that you guys will be able to grab what you're learning and be able to study it uh, on your um, on your uh, leisure time as well. So we're gonna have scripture as well to back it up, and and you can also play the playback. So the playback, you can listen to it and get more of it in case I, I'm a little fast because sometimes I may speed up a little bit um, due to time. Amen. So thank you guys. So Facebook and YouTube. Oh, I'm not on YouTube yet until we download it. When we're done with this, then we'll download it to uh, YouTube. But I am on Facebook uh, now. So if you guys have comments uh, on Facebook, just go ahead and put your questions pertaining to the topic guys pertaining to the topic only if you will be so kind let's stay on focus let's stay on track because a lot of times we we ask uh different other questions that we that's something that will be for another time and a different topic amen amen all right so um praise god let me see all right so um so uh Amen. I don't know right. why. So, uh, I don't know why that's so over here playing. Okay, so let me uh cut this other speaker off because that's what's going on. Okay, so let me uh, there we go. All right, sorry. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. I was trying to get the young lady a little time to get in, but she was having problems with her uh she was having problem getting her mic connected. Okay. All right, so the topic tonight is, is we're going to talk about Satan's part and God's perfect plan. I know that's kind of a lot, a lot of body, a lot. That's going to be a lot of question marks. Uh, everybody's going to be thinking of right now, but we're going to say Satan's part and God's perfect plan. Amen. So let me go ahead and pray. Father, we just thank you for our, for, for being our warrior and, and, and we thank you, Lord, for uh, going with us in the battle, oh God, and we, we that you have fight against our enemy and gave us the victory, oh God. And we thank you for enabling us to take our positions and, and stand still and watch the Lord's victory, oh God. You for enable us to take our position and stand still and watch the Lord's victory, oh God. I thank you that you are righteous, Father, and we are not fighting against flesh and blood of the enemy, but against against evil rulers and authorities in an unseen world, against mighty powers and evil spirits in the heavenly places. Today, we dress ourselves in our armor so that we may be able to stand firm against all strategies of the enemy. We will stand on our ground and put on our belt of truth and our body of the armor of God's righteousness, being fully prepared that we put on our shoes of peace that comes from God. good from the good news, oh God, and to hold us up with the shield of faith to stop the fear arrows, the fear. Fer- uh, fierce arrows of the devil and we put on our salvation as our helmet amen and we'll take the sword of the spirit which is the word of god and we will always pray in the spirit and and on or every occasion and stand alert and be persistent in our prayers for all believers everywhere oh god and we stand firm against every demonic attack in the form in the mighty name of Jesus, of active uh, shooters, bull- bullies, terrorists, uh, characters assassinated, abusers, and uh, uh, even rebellions. And no weapon that is turned against us will not succeed, oh God. We silence every voice that rises up to accuse us, for the Lord is our vindicator. And the thief may come to steal, kill, and destroy, but the Lord, your promise is to give us a rich and satisfied life, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we declare that every enemy is destroyed in the name and the power of the blood of Jesus. And if you in agreement with that, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. So the scripture that I'm coming out of tonight is Romans 16, verse 20. Romans 16, verse 20. All right, if you got it, amen. Yes, thank you, Liz. The God of peace will soon crush satan under your feet the grace of our lord jesus be with you amen be with you all amen so that so we're going to talk about uh paul this specific uh passage paul 
drew uh, his letter to the Romans to a close and he gave them a very serious warning about the dangers of division in the church. In particular, a document, uh, uh, the documents of division. He urged the brothers to take notes to those in the congregation who were division, that were where there was division and cause offense, and to avoid them. So often, those that are standing firm in the faith are attacked in this way by the enemy of our soul, who seducively, seducively twist the truth through a false teacher or someone who is not standing firm in the truth. See, Paul cautions that those who spread this sort of disun disunity, disunite in the body were often smooth talkers and who use flattering speech and introduce uh, uh, perversion, uh, which is um, which means twisting the documents into church see they deceive the heart of young ex inexperienced believers who love the lord by weaving error in, in with with the truth so they disrupted the unite of the spirit and they bound and they bound and the bound of peace within the body of christ he wanted them that these deceivers could cause serious issues and the deceptions was not identified and addressed so, or if if they were allowed to continue uh, continue down their destructive path, okay. So to keep the Christians safe and to maintain pure documents, so Paul urged the believers in Romans to become an increasingly uh, visual and to do what is right and to develop in an innocent and simplicity towards that which is evil. He assured that that then that if they remain obedient to the pure gospel of Christ, then the God of peace will soon crush Satan under his feet. And he, and then they will conclude with a lovely prayer and the grace of our Lord Jesus will be with you. Amen. Amen. So this is, we can actually re do this like, this is something that's now, that's going on in the church um, where we have uh, mixed, uh, strange fires, or we have dib and dab in different documents, and trying to trying to uh, put it into um, the truth, and it, and it and it doesn't work. And we always say that oil and water does cannot mix. So that's the same thing, you know, that we have to remember to go back to the biblical basic, the biblical principle of the foundation and build from that and not to add your own spill or your own elective ideas of that sort of thing. So we gotta remember to stand on God's word and speak God's word, what does the thus says the Lord at the end of the day, amen? So let me say this, Satan reminds me of those occasional times if you were, like for instance, I, I use it, if you ride a motorcycle and you Im uh, immediately put on a helmet, right? And you would set, and you would be ready to set out for that particular ride, okay? You don't have to ride the motorcycle. I just use this as an example for me so that, you know, understand where I'm trying to go with this. But, but with mixed feelings, we look forward to the ride. And we will sometimes uh, we will remain on our uh, remind remind ourselves. I'm sorry of the danger that's involved. And you know Illinois, of course, they don't even have to wear no helmet. But you never go without your armor, ladies and gentlemen. You got the you your armor is to protect you. The helmet is to protect the mind. Amen. Amen. So we got to keep it on it all the time daily all the time consistently amen and so um so also um we're going to use uh the study so we're going to study uh study this specific passage and uh and it is important that we dare not be ignorant of this of satan's strategies and then in second corinthians 2 verse 11 second corinthians 2 verse 11 it says that in order that no advantage be taken of us by Satan, for we are what? Not ignorant of the schemes, means the plan or the strategies, right? Of the enemy, amen? So our approach must be one of the soberness. That means soberness means you gotta have a clear head. A lot of times, I'ma just be honest, a lot of us have so much clutter in our minds and smoke screens and, and different things that tend to confuse us where we're not able to be able to discern what is truth, 
And we got, I always tell them, with, we are living in these uh, evil times. We got to allow, our, ask the Holy Spirit to give us our discernments to be turned up even the more. Amen. Even the greater. I remember one of my girlfriends who used to always say what I was, I would say 10,000 times. She'd be like a, 10 triple times uh, your, your discernment needs to be turned up. And that is so, so true. Because, you know, you go in, you, you know, you look at a situation and not even knowing that that thing could be camouflage, camouflage in itself and it can be a counterfeit thing. And so so you got to be able to, you know, pick up that, you know, what is what is good and what is bad. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, so again for the issues at hand at life um oh let me go back an approach must like i said the, our approach must be sober-minded okay and that means for the issues of hand and or or life and death like heaven and hell and we should avoid foolishness okay and disrespect and care carefreeness see satan is a serpent and and as such he is not only deadly but often it's so well camouflaged we, we, we do not, when we do not see him. See, some Christians sees too much of Satan as though he were behind every biblical blast bush, I'm sorry, but others see him too little, too little of him. And some therefore give him too much credit and others too little, okay? But where did the devil come from? To put it uh, another way, how could a God of love create someone horrible as the devil? See, he's still a good guy. See, because the reason why um, God created um, the angels in heaven, see, Lucifer made that choice because see, God doesn't override our free will. Okay, so jealousy got there, uh, pride got set in, and that's why Lucifer got thrown out, okay? So we already know that. And that's why I said God just gives us free will. He gives us a choice. He don't force himself on us. He don't make you uh, love him. He don't make you to you know do what's right. He don't make you remain holy. That's your choice, okay? But you, if you are in your word and you know the know the word for yourself you know that he is holy amen and you know that he you know what he stands and represent amen so again this question is based on an unsound wrong reason since it assumes that we are in a in, in a position to criticize god see many who refuse to look into what the bible says on the subject and simply decides that god seriously made a mistake no, he didn't in this area. See, we should not be put our trust in the enemy, okay? All right, and, and, and that's what the enemy wants us to put, you know, kind of steer away from God, steer away from God's uh, divine destiny that he has already planned and destined for us. He tries to, to steer us away, further away from God as much as possible. And that's what he does, because, you know, he's a, the father of lies and lies. So that's what he does best is to try to continue to deceive us. OK, so. Let's turn to Genesis 1, verse 31, Genesis 1, verse 31. It said, when God created the world, we are told that God examined it and he declared it was good. OK. So this means that even the angelical world did not have an evil angel or a demon in it at, at that time. See, but the time of Genesis chapter three, we find that Satan in, was in the form of a serpent and he was and that's where he tempted evil, I mean Eve, I'm sorry, to sin. So therefore, sometimes between the events of Genesis chapter one and Genesis chapter three, there must have been a rebellion in the angelical world world and with many angels turning against God and becoming evil. See, this rebellion was led by Satan, which was Lucifer, same thing, himself. Okay. So number one, God did not create evil. See, a lot of people get that, get that con concept twisted, but know that God is a good father. 
And when he created the world, when he created, it, he, his word said, it is good. Okay? So know that God did not create evil. The Lord is a God of love, mercy, and compassion, especially through through the unpleasant foul moments. The Bible says that 1 John 3 and 8, 1 John 3 and 8, it said anyone who practices sins belongs to the evil one because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Okay. And if you got any questions, you guys can go ahead and put it in the comment and I'll address that question as well okay see the devil was the first uh um the first event of evil was that uh we talked about uh in genesis chapter three okay that was the first event okay in the garden of Eden. okay so now we're going to talk about there is a mystery about evil there is a mystery about evil the bible describes it as a mystery of an iniquity in 2 Thessalonians 2, verse 3, uh, 2 Thessalonians 2, 3, 7, 3, 3 to 7, but I'm just going to read the first one, but just giving you an idea of what it was talking about. It's talking about for the secret power of the lawlessness is already at work, but the one who holds it back will continue to do till he is taken out of the way, okay? And the Webster Dictionary defined iniquity as a shameless, disgraceful, injustice, and wickedness. See, we can't uh, know everything about evil, but it continues and can't be dismissed out of our mind. And Paul warned us about an overall, overall loss of godliness and even a increase in rebellion against God. They tell they tells of a man who presumes presum, presumes to put himself in the place of God. And number three, tragedies. Well, tragedy shows our need for one another. A tragedy shows our need for one another. When there's tragedy and hardships or opportunity to share each other's burdens, we cannot go through this life alone. See, God promised never to abandon us. He cares so much that he wants to surround us with people who can share our struggles and encourage us along the way. And that's why I said it's so important that you connect with kingdom-minded people, amen? Earn sharpens earn, amen? You need to be able to glean from someone that's been through it, made it through, and, and, and can rejoice and get the victory, amen? Because if you find someone that just, that's always negative, always uh, bitter, that, that we talked about that on yesterday on the podcast, their heart has become heartened, okay? Or they have hold, held on to that unforgiveness where that bitterness is also as, grab, as, as, as grown as well, okay? So, amen. Evil exists and the tragedy happens far too often. Yet the Bible tells us that God has provided a solution to evil through every, um, I mean, through evil uh, persists, persists one day and it will come to an end, amen? So when that happened, those who are, in, that are God's children, his people will live with him forever without evil, amen? Amen. Let's know next one. Let's know about God's purpose. God's purpose is peace and life peace, eternal life, okay? See, God loves you and he wants to express, uh, wants you to experience the peace of eternal life. See, the Bible says in Romans 5 and uh, 1, Romans 5 verse 1, it says, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. And then John 3 and 16, John 3 and 16 said, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. John 10 and 10, John 10 and 10 said, the thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. And I have come that you may have life and have it, into, have it to the full. 
Amen. So what keeps us from having the life God plans for us? That's a question I want to ask. What is keeping us from having the life God plans for us? And write it in the chat if you would. What, what do you think, what is keeping us from having the life of God's plan for us? Okay. Amen. All right. So any, oh, you guys can unmute if you can answer the question. Lack of knowledge. That's good, friend. Absolutely. Lack of knowledge. That's number one. They said people perish because of knowledge. Amen. All right. Amen. Anybody else? Okay. All right. Lack of meeting with other believers. Lack of meeting with others believers. Okay. That's why it's so so um, good to get uh, fellowship, uh, church, and Bible study. Unbelief. That's good, Kelly. Unbelief. That's good. Rebellion. That's good too, uh, Fran. Absolutely. Correct. What? And I like that, Kelly, because she said what keeps us from uh, having a life uh, that God's plan is because that unbelief, you know, um, an unstable person is waver and it wavers their faith. You know, it's, they unstable, you know. So yeah, that's good. Good. And rebellion, we already know rebellion is like the same as uh, stubbornness, pride. Yeah, unstable. Yeah. All right. So let's go ahead. So the problem, our, uh, the the problem is our separation from God. The problem is our separation from God. You notice um, when they uh, Eve and a Adam and Eve in the garden, they didn't immediately died, but they spiritually died first, meaning they were separated from God. There was no line of communication no more. It was literally blocked, okay, off because of the disobedience, okay? All right. I like that. I like that. Sandra says, and no, and not knowing our identity. I like that one, Sandra. Uh, because that uh, that because that does if you don't know who you are in Christ, then you all it's like you allowing everybody else to dictate who you are by saying you know how people would say something like or oh, you're just like your dad and say you or you're just like your mom they they're putting really word curses in you know in a sense if if your parent is you know did you know was alcoholic or on drugs or whatever or was a, a bad person whatever the case so if you don't know who you are in christ that 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 right there is a is so important that we need to know who we are in christ and by knowing who we are in christ that's why it's so important that we spend time with him that's why we have to get to know him it's just like when you're in a dating game when you first met your husband and everything, y'all was getting to know each other and getting to know the do's and the don'ts and everything. That's the same with God. You got to get in your word. You got to get that time to un understand. And like I said, and get to know his heart. What makes him, what makes him happy? What makes him smile? Amen. 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 All right. So the problem I said are, are, are separating from God. So God created us in his image. He gave us a will and the freedom of choice. And we choose to disobey him and go our own way, which is called sin. This separated us from God. Okay. Turn to Romans 3, verse 23. Romans 3, verse 23. And Romans 3, verse 23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. And then go to Romans 6, verse 23. Romans 6, verse 23. It says, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. So our choice to sin separates us from God. People have tried many ways to bridge this gap between themselves and God. And the Bible also says, if you turn to Proverbs 14 and 12, Proverbs 14 and 12, it says, 
There is a way that appears to be right, but in the end, it leads to death. And then Isaiah 59 and 2, Isaiah 59 and 2, it says, but your iniquities have separated you from your God and your sins have hidden his face from you so that he will not hear. Okay. So again, we don't want to walk in disobedience, which she was, she mentioned rebellion. We don't want to reject God because when that happens, it separates us from him. So that sin puts you deeper and deeper uh, in bondage, okay? And it, it makes it sort of hard to hear from God, okay? It makes it hard for your discernment to be in tune with the Holy Spirit, okay? Any questions? All right. All right. Okay. Any questions? All right. No questions. Amen. 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 All right. So let's go to God's bridge, which is the cross. God's bridge, which is the cross. We always, I tell people, we always got to take people to the cross. We always got to lead them back to their first love. And that's back to the cross. Amen. That's why it's so important that our evangelist uh, skills uh, be turned up. You know, we need to be uh, building God's kingdom. I say just like the enemy is recruiting people for the kingdom of darkness, we should be evangelizing every opportunity we get because God, he, he'll put people in your path. And that test, I'd rather pass it the first go round, guys. Because each time it may get a different, a little challenging. So, uh, and 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 it's sad that you know, people is so many religions, and and then people don't they're confused. They don't know what is good and what is evil. You know, they I, and, and we already know that the truth. They're not gonna believe the truth. They'll believe a lie opposed over the truth. Amen. All right. So no bridges reaches God. No bridge reaches God except one, and that's Jesus. All right. Amen. See, Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave. And when he did, he paid the penalty for our sins and bridged that gap between us and God. Amen. So let's turn to 1 Timothy 2 and 5. 1 Timothy 2, verse 5. For there is one God and one mediator between God and mankind, the man Christ Jesus. Amen. 1 Peter 3, verse 18. 1 Peter 3, verse 18. And I know I'm going a little fast, y'all, because I'm trying to finish this before seven o'clock, which I'm not. <laughs> All right. So first Peter three, verse 18, for Christ also suffered once for sins, the righteous for unrighteousness to bring you to God. See, God has provided the only way back to him. You must make a choice you must make a conscious decision who you going to serve are you going to serve these false pagans are you going to um, serve these occult practices the now we got greek gods so many uh christians talking about i, I matter of fact i told y'all about a week ago i had one of my sisters in christ and um went into a Christian sorority. So that right there is what the enemy is deceiving the Christians. See, remember I told you, he already got the non-believers. He already got the world 
working for him. So he's aiming for the Christians. He's aiming for the church. And so if he what he does, he paint the picture and he'll put any anything going into to, to 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 lead you to him. He'll put a Christian in front of a pagan guy. He'll put Christian in front of an occult. He'll put Christian a front, a, in front of witchcraft. Did y'all catch what I just said? Okay. So we got to be careful. Got to be very, very cautious on who we're going to serve and who we're going to follow. Because if you're not rooted and grounded in the word of God, then and, and you can just be like, and as as I said, the wind blow, you 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 shift over to this. So you gotta you gotta stay on that straight and narrow pro, uh, path, and not get and not not waver, not you know not you know get off course. Okay. Amen. Questions got to stay on. Okay. okay. Questions. All right. All right. All right. So next. Our response, I, I respond is to receive Christ. Amen. Our response is to receive Christ and receiving him as your Lord and Savior, receiving Christ. Uh, you know, as it said, get louder, get me personal. You know, if you don't have a father, in your life, God is that whatever that void is, He's your heavenly Father. Amen. Amen. All right. He's a he's a he's a brother to the brotherless. He's a mother to the motherless. He's a father to the fatherless. Amen. So we must trust and receive Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. You hear what I said? We must trust and trust. You already know. With the word said, we must trust the Lord with what? Half of our heart? Some of our heart? No, with all of our heart. Amen. That's right. I was just making sure we we on the same page with all of our heart. And amen. Praise God. John 1 and 12. John 1 and 12. Yet to all who did receive him to those who believe in his name he gave the right to become a child of god and then romans 10 and 9 romans 10 and 9 if you declare with your mouth jesus is the lord and believe in your heart that god raised him from the dead you will be saved come on not these pagan religions, okay? But we're talking about the true and living God. God gave his only begotten son. Amen. Amen. Which side, this is something that you need to ask your question, uh, question again. What side are you on? Remember how you say, I always tell you, you can't serve two masters. You will hate one and you love the other. So what that means, God is a jealous God. Okay. So you have to make a conscious decision again, who you going to serve. Decide with Christ or without him. And we already know we, we choose without him there is damnation. There is a role of destruction. The wages of sin is death. Okay. So you have to make it up in your mind today, Lord, I'm going to serve you full heartedly. And with that being said, that I'm going to be obedient and do what you're calling me to do. Be that vessel, be your mouth, be his mouthpiece to spread the good news, to spread the gospel. Amen. All right. So here, and I'm almost done. So here are 
how you can accept Christ in your life. And that's why I, I, I tell you guys about evangelizing, because if you don't know how to evangelize, then people will come cross your path on a daily basis and you, you'll miss the mark of that opportunity to minister the sinner's prayer. Ask them, you know, do you know? I remember I had a friend of mine's rest her soul and uh, she passed away. Her name was Michelle too. And we could be in Jack in the Box line and get to the cash register, the cashier. And she say, sweetheart, do you know? Yeah, they're weak in it. Okay. So you had to admit that you're in need and you, you, you have sinned. Okay. Next, be willing to turn from your sins. Be willing to turn from your sins. Repent, repent. I told somebody the other day, I feel like I'm John Baptist's cousin, uh, first cousin now, because I every time I, I get an opportunity, I'll be like, repent, repent. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It's here, it's here. <laughs> it's already here. Okay, so that is exactly where we need to be ourselves be repenting on a daily basis because we have also we can fall short it's stuff we can thought we have thought that was not pleasing to god and he heard it or we have said something that he was not pleased that came out of it didn't edify god it didn't you know so we have to remember to repent also on a daily but uh base and believe that Jesus Christ died for you on the cross and rose from the grave. All right? So be saved by faith. Be saved by faith. And also through prayer, invite Jesus Christ to control your life through the Holy Spirit. Receive him as your Lord and Savior. So I always say, take him to the cross. Even in... Uh, even in sermons that you write and you you speaking before uh, in a crowd of people, at the end of each sermon that I do, I try to always take them to the cross. Take them to the cross at the end of each sermon. Just like I told you, I just did a eulogy for a young cousin of mine that passed away on Monday. And that was exactly at the end of that eulogy. I, I made sure allow them to remember the cross get them back to the cross what was the purpose for the blood that was shed for you and i it was to redeem us amen all right as i come to a close father i come to you in the name of jesus your word says whosoever shall call on the name of the lord shall be saved i am calling on you and i pray and i ask jesus to come into my heart and be the Lord over my life according to Romans 10, verse 9 and 10. If I shall confess with the mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and shall believe in thy heart that God has risen from the dead, thy shall be saved. For with the heart man believe unto, the un, uh, unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation and i do that now and i confess that jesus is lord and i believe in my heart that god raised raised him from the dead and i am now reborn and i am a christian a child of mighty god and i and i am saved in jesus name amen so if you said that prayer for the very first time or even rededicated your uh back over to your, you know, your life back to God. We celebrate you. Heaven is already rejoicing. Welcome to the kingdom of God. Amen. And I always say, get in a spirit-filled church. Get in a Bible studying, uh, Bible uh, class that's going to teach about building God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. I was telling somebody the other day, you got to know your gifts of the Holy Spirit, and you need to get sharpen them. You got to sharpen them. That's what we talk about the discernment. That's one of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Okay. Amen. Amen. All right. Any questions? Amen. All right. Well, let's get our books ready then. 
go ahead to page uh, 69. I don't know what page y'all, if y'all have a Kindle, because I, I get that mixed up. But if you have your books, please raise your hand so I can call on you to help us read. Amen. I know I have a few people that was new in the class. Amen. Okay. All right. Dr. Lala, she got hers. Liz got hers. Fran got hers. Okay. Amen. All right. Praise God. All right. Well, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and get started. Friend, if you're ready, in uh, chapter seven, the principle of Satan's oppression, could you please uh, read that for me, please? Yes. Um, I thought we were in chapter six, the battle for your mind. Right. Let me let me ask let me ask my secretary. Hold on. Okay. Liz, <laughs> what chapter thought we on? Um, chapter seven, the principles of Satan's oppression. Thank you. All right. I know I've been in my A, y'all. So I'll tell you, I'm getting back on course. <laughs> Amen. Okay. So yes, Pastor, chapter seven. Gotcha. Amen. Gotcha. <laughs> okay you know last you know last week you know last week we read both of those chap chapters five and six we yeah we ran through that we did that so we finished that last week so yes now all right babe go ahead ready when you are okay the principles of satan's oppression because of the multitude of oppression the people cry out they cry for help because of the violence of the, of the mighty. Job 35 and 9. The word of God clearly identifies who our enemy is, how he came to be, and how he operates to attack and oppress mankind. The best way for the Christian to prepare for spiritual warfare against Satan and his forces and to be victorious is to truly, is to truly understand the principles of Satan's oppression and the weapons of warfare available to all believers. You must know the enemy, understand how he works. If you want to live a victorious life, ignorance will keep a child of God living a defeated life. The next two chapters are filled with comprehensive information that will help you know your enemy. We recommend that you use the study and continue your an your an analysis on this subject to sharpen your spiritual warfare tools. Remember that we are in this world, but we are not of this world. When we see things happening that are wrong and evil, remember it's not happening in the kingdom of God we live in. The worldly kingdom is limited, but we live in a kingdom that is unlimited. Keep things separated and in perspective. We are citizens of the kingdom of God. I will seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And I believe that everything I need will be added unto me. Matthew 6 and 33. Satan's origin, fall, and final destiny. The sun of the morning is cast out. How you have fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weakened the nations. Isaiah 14 and 12. The anointed cherub of protection is cast out. You were the seal of perfection, full of wisdom and perfect and beauty. You were in Eden, the garden of God. Every precious stone was your covering. The, the sardius, topaz, and diamond, burlix, onyx, and jasper sapphire, turquoise, and emerald with gold, the workmanship of your timbrels, timbrels and pipes was prepared for you on the day you were created. You were the anointed cherub who covers, I established you. You were on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. You were perfect in your ways from the day you were created till iniquity was found in you. By the abundance of your trading, you became filled with violent within, and you sinned. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing, 
out of the mountain of God. And I destroyed you, O covering cherub, from the midst of the fiery stones. Your heart was lifted up because of your beauty. You corrupted your wisdom for the sake of your splendor. I cast you to the ground. I laid you before kings that they might gaze at you. You defile your sanctuaries by the multitude of your iniquities, by the, by the iniquity of your trading. Therefore, I brought fire from your midst. It devoured you. And I turned you to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all who saw you. All who knew you among the people are astonished at you. You have become a horror and shall no more and shall be no more forever. Ezekiel 28, 12 through 19. Satan falls from heaven as lightning. And he said to them, I saw Satan fall like lightning from heaven. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Luke 10, 18 through 19. The devil was destroyed by the death and resurrection of Christ. And as much then as the children have partaken of the of flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared in the same that through death he might destroy him who had the power of death, that is, the devil, and release those who through fear of death were all were all their lifetime subject to bondage. Hebrews 2, 14 through 15. Having wiped out the handwriting of requirement that was against us, which was contrary to us, and he has taken it out of the way, having nailed it to the cross, having disarmed principalities and powers, he made a public spectacle of them, triumphing over them in it. Colossians 2, 14 through 15. Jesus Christ destroyed the works of the devil. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this pur purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3 and 8. The dragon, the serpent, and all the demons are cast out. So the great dragon was cast out, that serpent of old called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. He was cast to the earth and his angels were cast out with him. Then I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now salvation and strength and the kingdom of our God and the power of his Christ have come. For the accuser of our brethren who accused them before our God day and night has been cast down. And they overcome him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. Revelation 12, 9 through 11. Pause. Amen. So you guys, if y'all have questions pertaining to what we were reading, more than welcome to lift up your hands and let me know or write the questions in uh, on Facebook, on the chat. And I... Uh, We'll go back and answer those as well. All right. Well, if not, and no questions, we're going to go ahead and to the next page. Um, Liz. Okay. The devil will be bound and thrown into the bottomless pit. Then I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key to the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. He laid hold of the dragon and serpent of old, who was the devil and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. And he cast upon the bottomless pit and shut him up and, see, and set a seal on him so that he should deceive. So he should deceive the nations no more till a thousand years were finished. But after these things, he must be released for a little while. Revelation 20, one through three, nature, personality, and character of demons. They are evil. God sent a spirit of ill between Abimelech and the man of Shechem. And the man of Shechem dealt treacherously with Abimelech. Judges 9.23. They are intelligent. Now it happened, as we went into prayer, the act of the... 
that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who brought her master much profit by fortune telling. Acts 16 and 16. They are powerful. They come to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gardenians. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him a out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no one could bind him not even with chains because he had often bound them with shackles and chains and the chains had been pulled apart by him and the shackles broken in pieces neither could anyone tame him and always night by day he was in the mountains in the tombs crying out and cutting himself with stones mark 1, 5 1 through 5 they have knowledge and understanding. And suddenly they cried out, saying, What have we to do with you, Jesus, you son of God? Have you come to torment us before the time? Matthew eight twenty nine. See also Luke four forty one and Acts nineteen and fifteen. They have set emotions and sentiments. And when he cried out with a loud voice and he said, what have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do, do not torment me. Mark 5 and 7. They have a table of communion. Rather, that the things of the Gentile sacrifice, they sacrifice the demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. You cannot the, drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and the table of demons. 1 Corinthians 10, 20 through 21. They have doctrines. Now the Spirit expressly says that in the later times some will depart from faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. First Timothy 4 and 1. They have wills. When an unclean spirit goes out of a man, he goes to the dry places, seeking rest and finds none. Then he says, I'll return to my house from which I came. And when he comes, he finds it empty, swept and put in order. Then he goes and takes with him seven other spirits, more wicked than himself. And they enter and dwell there. And the last day of the man is worse than the first. So it shall also be with the, this wicked generation. Matthew twelve forty three through 45. They have miraculous powers. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of a false prophet. They are a spirit of demons performing signs which go out to the king of the earth and the whole world to go to go to gather them from the battle of the, the great day of the God Almighty. Revelation 16, 13 through 14. They have emotions. For unclean spirits crying out with a loud voice came out of many who were possessed and many who were paralyzed and the lame were healed. Acts 8 and 7. They have desires. When he had come to the other side, to the country of the Gardenesians, there, there met him two demon-possessed men coming out of the tombs, exceedingly fierce, and that no one could pass the way. And suddenly they cried out, saying, What have you to do do with you, Jesus, you son of God. Have you come here to torment us before time? Now a good way off from there was a herd of many swine feeding. So the demons begged him, saying, If you can pass out, permit us to go to the herd of swine. Matthew 8, 28. Pause. Pause. All right. Let's have a, a quick, quick. Uh... All right. Who was all in the class last week? Who was all in the, give me hands. Who was all in the class last week? Me, Go it for... was just you and me. <laughs> Girl, we read, uh-uh, boo, we read all, I remember reading six, because it was easy. Yeah, because we stopped that, um, you can't have my miracle published by Charisma House, and that's as far as we went. So we didn't even go. I had I must have had an errand to do. Yeah. Is that yeah, what it was? Did. And then we covered um in our notes, we covered uh the battle for your mind is what we covered in our notes. In the notes. That's correct. Mm -hmm. All right. So well we're gonna go ahead. We'll well five and six for the head went together because they did, you know, I apologize. We just skipped the seven and uh We'll try to get it at the end. The battle of mind was good. Fran loved that. I, that's why she wanted to hit on that because it, it was very powerful and it's so important 
uh, that we understand that. No, it's no problem. If you wasn't here last week, Liz, there's no apology. Because like I said, it was just me and Fran. We was reading together and I had to run out because I, you know, I told you I had a family emergency to take care of. All right, so let's go ahead. Uh, where are we at? Well, pick up uh, Dr. Dr. Lala, where's she at? Okay, I, I text to see. Oh, there she goes. She's she can she can go ahead. I'm here, page seventy eight. Yes, ma'am. They have a memory, and the evil spirit answered and said, "Jesus, I know, and Paul, I know, but who are you?" Acts nineteen, verse fifteen. They have no body. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs coming out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons performing signs, which go out of the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Revelation 16, verses 13 through 14. They are different from angels. For Sadducees say that there is no resurrection and no angel or spirit, but the Pharisees confess both. Then there arose a loud outcry, and the scribes of the Pharisees' party arose and protested, saying, We found no evil in this man. But if a spirit or an angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. Acts 23, verses 8 through 9. Demons worshiped and are worshiped. Idolatry is worship to the demons. They sacrificed to demons, not to God. To gods they did not know. To new gods, new arrivals that your fathers did not hear. Deuteronomy 32, verse 17. They have ministers that serve them. Therefore, it is no great thing if his ministers also transfer themselves, excuse me, transform themselves into ministers of righteousness, whose end will be according to their works. Second Corinthians chapter 11, verse 15. Son of God can fall into the curse of serving other gods. So they left all the commandments of the Lord, their God, made for themselves a a molded image and two calves, made a wooden image and worshiped all the hosts of heaven and served Baal. And they caused their sons and daughters to pass through the fire, practice witchcraft and soothsaying and sold themselves to, to do evil in the sight of the Lord, to provoke him to anger. Second Kings 17, verses 16 through 17. The devil asked Christ to worship him. Then the devil, talking him up on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, all this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. Luke 4, 5 through 7. Demonic cults have a table of communion. Rather that the things which the Gentiles sacrifice, they sacrifice to demons and not to God. And I do not want you to have fellowship with demons. You cannot drink the cup of the Lord and the cup of demons. You cannot partake of the Lord's table and of the table of demons. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 20 through 21. Demons are worshiped and offered sacrifices. They shall no more offer their sacrifices to demons after whom they have played the harlot. They shall be a statue forever for them throughout their generations. Leviticus 17 verse 17. Men are condemned for worshiping demons, but the rest of mankind who are not killed by the plagues did not repent of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver, brass, stone, and wood, 
which can neither see nor hear nor walk. And they did not repent of their murders or their sorcerers, sorceries, or their sexual immorality or their deaths. Revelation 9, 20 through 21. The different spirits that appear in the Bible. The spirits of God and the spirits of Antichrist. Beloved, do not believe every spirit, but test the spirits, whether they are of God, because many false prophets have gone out into the world. By this, you know, the spirit of God, every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is of God. And every spirit that does not confess that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is not of God. And this is the spirit of Antichrist which you have heard was coming and is now already in the world. 1 John 4, verses 1 through 3. Deceiving spirits. Now the spirit expressly says that in latter times, some will depart from the faith, giving heed to deceiving spirits and doctrines of demons. 1 Timothy 4, verse 1. Pause. Thank you, doctor. Okay, no questions. That's good. We, all right, uh, Fran. Now we, we can go back over them since they're going over different scriptures. Because I was like different ones. I was checking out that that is really something that we need to hit on. But go ahead, Fran. We on the spirit of disobedience. Okay. Spirit of disobedience in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience. Ephesians 2 and 2. Spirit of the world. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit who is from God, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. 1 Corinthians 2 and 12 and see also Galatians 1 and 4. Spirit of bondage, for you did not receive the spirit of bondage, again to fear, but you receive the spirit of adoption, by whom we cry out, Abba, Father. Romans 8 and 15. Spirit of divination, now it now it happened as we went to prayer that a certain slave girl possessed with a spirit of divination met us, who brought her masters much profit by fortune telling. Acts 16 and 16. Unclean spirit of idolatry. It shall be in that day, says the Lord of hosts, that I will cut off the names of the idols from the land, and they shall no longer be remembered. I will also cause the prophets and the unclean spirits to depart from the land. Zechariah 3 and 2. Spirit of prostitution. Their deeds do not permit them to return to their God. A spirit of pro prostitution is in their heart. They do not acknowledge the Lord. Hosea 5 and 4. See also Hosea 4 and 12. Spirit of dizziness confusion, bewilderment. The Lord has poured into them a spirit of dizziness. Isaiah 19 and 14. Spirit of sleep. For the Lord has poured out on you the spirit of deep sleep. Isaiah 29 and 10. Spirit of fear, fright. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of, uh, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Second Timothy 1 and 7. See also Job 4, 15 through 16. Isaiah 21 and 4. The spirit of lies. Then a spirit came forward and stood before the Lord and said, I will persuade him. The, lo the Lord said to him, in what way? So he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, you shall persuade him and also prevail. Go out and do so. First Kings 22, 21 through 22. Evil spirits, ill will, admosity. Then the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them, overpowered them and prevailed against them 
so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Acts 19 and 16, see also Judges 9 and 23. A haughty spirit, pride and arrogance. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 16 and 18. A broken spirit, sadness. A merry heart does good like medicine, but a broken spirit dries the bones. Proverbs 17 and 22. A spirit of anger. Do not hasten in your spirit to be angry, for anger rests in the bosom of fools. Ecclesiastes 7 and 9. Spirit of infirmity, sicknesses. And behold, there was a woman who had a spirit of infirmity 18 years and was bent over and could in no way raise herself up. Luke 13 and 11. The love of money. But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation and a snare and into foolish and harmful lusts which drown men in destruction and prudention. For the love of money is the root of all kinds of evil for which some, some have strayed from the faith in their greediness and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. First Timothy 6, 9 through 10. Spirits that promote hypocrisy and lying. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession. And he kept back part of the proceeds, his wife also being aware of it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and keep back part of the piece of land for yourself? While it remained, was it not your own? And after it was sold, was it not in your own control? Why have you conceived this thing in your heart? You have not lied to men, but to God. Acts 5, 1 through 4. Spirits that sow, sow doubt, mistrust, and ambition in men. And he, the serpent, said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but the fruit, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, you shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die, for God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be open, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the fruit was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, and he ate. Genesis 3, 1 through 6. Spirits that compel men to do diabolical and ad admirable damage. And I will come near you for judgment. I will be a swift witness against sorcerers, against adulteress, against prejurers, against those who exploit wage earners and widows and orphans and against those who turn away an alien because they do not fear me says the lord of hosts malachi 3 and 5 spirits who corrupt men to negotiate with the souls through witchcraft magic charming and enchantment thus says the lord god woe to the woman who sew magic charms on their sleeves and make veils for the heads of people of every height to hunt souls. While you hunt the souls of my people and keep yourselves alive, and while you profane me among my people for hatefuls of bar barley and for pieces of bread, killing people who should not die and keeping people alive who should not live, by your by your lying to my people, who listens to lies? Ezekiel 13, 18 through 19. Spirits who deliver cities to the devil, sorcerers. Because of the multitude of harlotters, 
of the seductive harlot, the mistress of sorcerers, who sell nations through her harlotries and families through her sorceries. Nahum 3 and 4. Spirits who put up with Christian's, Christian worldliness, indifferent and conformity. Do not love the world or the things in the world. If anyone loves the world, the love of the Father is not in him. 1 John 2 and 15. Spirits who cause sickness and poverty. Now a certain woman had a flow of blood for 12 years and had suffered many things from many physicians. She had spent all that she had and was no better, but rather grew worse. Mark 5, 25 through 26. The purposes of God to permit Satan to continue. To maintain man's humbleness. Unless I should be exalted above measure by the abundance of the revelations, a thorn in the flesh was given to me, a messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I be exalted above measure. 2 Corinthians 12 and 7. To develop the character and faith of the believer. Blessed is the man who endures temptation, for when he had been approved, he will receive the crown of life, which the Lord has promised to those who love him. James 1 and 12, also 1 Peter 1 and 7 through 13, 5, 8 through 9, and Jude 20 through 24. To promote conflicts whereby the saints can be rewarded when they overcome. You are of God, little children, and have overcome them. Because he who is in you is greater than he who is in the world. They are of the world. Therefore, they speak as of the world and the world hears them. We are of God. He who knows God hears us. He who is not of God does not hear us. But this we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. First John 4 and 4 and Revelation 2, 26 and 28. Paul, sis. Pause. Okay. Uh, Liz. Okay. Finish. For the, destruction okay, go ahead. Of, for the destruction of flesh so that the spirit may be saved. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, when you are gathered together along with my spirit, with the power of our Lord Jesus Christ, deliver such a one to Satan for the destruction of the flesh, that his spirit may be saved in the day of our Lord Jesus. 1 Corinthians 5, 4 through 5. See also Job 33, 14 through 30, and 2 Corinthians 2, 5 through 11. The demonstrate of power of God over all satanic power. Then they were all amazed so that they questioned among themselves saying, what is this? What new doctrine is this? For which authority he commands even the unclean spirits and they obey him. Mark 1, 27. See also Mark 16, 7 through, 17 through 20, Acts 13, 6 through 10. To purify men and make them immune from all possibility of sinning in, in the eternal future. Let Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. 2 Corinthians 2 and 11. To perfect us in the knowledge of good and evil, of God and the devil. To encourage voluntary service to God. Beloved, do not think it is strange concerning the fiery trial which is tried to you. As though some strange things happen to you, but rejoice to the extent that partake of Christ's sufferings, that when his glory is revealed, you may be also be glad with exceeding joy. If you are reproached for the name of Christ, blessed are you, for the spirit of glory and God rest upon you. On their part he is blasphemed, but on your part he is glorified. 1 Peter 4, 12-14. See also Hebrews 12-23. To permit the free will, free will of man to be proven, being exposed to evil, and thereby choosing to correct the way to voluntarily decide to serve, believing in Christ as the Lord and Savior. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest into your souls. Matthew eleven twenty nine. See also Deuteronomy eleven 
26 through 28 and 30, 19. Pause, pause, pause. Okay, so we got another, almost another hour to finish the next chapter. And I think that's like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, I don't think we better finish that. That's a lot of pages, the works of the devil. So we probably uh, pick up that next week. But I do want to go back to the battle. You see how long is the battle of the mind? Oh, that's real short. So we could we could do that tonight. All right. So any questions, go ahead and write them down or unmute pertaining to the principle of Satan's oppression. Write them down or raise your hand or go ahead and unmute. If not, we're going to go ahead and read the battle of the mind, the battle for your mind real quick. All right. Um, Dr. Lala, go ahead and do page uh, 63 for me in chapter six. The battle for your mind. But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is my members. Romans 7, verse 23. This chapter will introduce you to many of the principles you must understand about your mind and Satan's desire to hinder you from avoiding his insidious progressive takeover of it. Each principle will provide you with a scriptorial support. Many of these principles may be concepts or issues that are affecting your own life. Determine to do a deeper study of these principles so that you may achieve victory victory over Satan's strategies and walk in freedom from his demonic control. Anything the mind sets itself on and accepts is what man will desire and seek after. Do you not know that to whom you present yourself slaves to obey, you are that one's slaves whom you obey, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Romans 6, verse 16. A disturbed mind is harmful to the spiritual life. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a, a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting. Romans 1, verse 28. Your mind should not be ruled by your feelings. A fool vents all his feelings, but a wise man holds them back. Proverbs 29 and 11. Your head needs to be kept in a humble state. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Romans 12 verse 16. The word of God must be implanted into your mind. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your souls. James 1 verse 21. Your mind must not operate independently of the spirit's rule. For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh but those who live according to the spirit, the things of the spirit. Romans 8, verse 5. You are commanded to love God with all of your, your mind. And you shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. This is the first commandment. Mark 12, verse 30. We were created to be perfected to be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. That you be perfectly joined together in the same mind and in the same judgment. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 10. You were created with the mind. Oh, I'm of sorry, Christ. Dr. I'm sorry, Dr. Lala. I was gonna tell you to pause after that, baby. 
All right. Any questions? If not, Fran, go ahead. Any questions? Nobody yet raised their hand and had any questions. Now, y'all remember, y'all can ask questions by unmuting, I mean, raising your hand or putting it in your comment in the chat. All right, friend, let's go ahead and we can end this uh, chapter. We're almost done. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. You are created with the mind of Christ. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. First Corinthians 2 and 16. The carnal mind is enmity against God and doesn't desire the things of the spirit of God. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, nor indeed can be. Romans 8 and 7. God created our mind with the capacity to understand the spiritual principles of the kingdom of God. The word says, be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Ephesians 4 and 23. This is a command. I believe it is the most important requirement that you must obey in order to exercise your authority over Satan and live in freedom. God's truth defeats the lies of the enemy against the character of God and the devil's deception about who you are in Christ and your commitment to serve him. See John 8 and 44. God's truth also enables you to enter into battle to gird up your loins means to buckle your belt for action first peter 1 and 13 y'all i'm ready to throw something <laughs> be prepared for attack see also exodus 12 and 11 luke 12 and 35 the mind is the battleground of our thoughts the mind governed by the flesh produces spiritual death. The mind governed by the spirit of God produces life and peace. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. Romans 8 and 6. The unrenewed mind remains and dwells in darkness. Whose minds the, the God, lower G, of this age has blinded? who do not believe, lest the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine on them. 1 Corinthians 4 and 4. Having their understanding darkened, being alienated from the life of God, because of the ignorance that is in them, because of the hardening of their heart. Ephesians 4 and 18. Finding freedom for your mind. Your memory must be set free and cleansed from things of the past. Hallelujah. Bondage in the mind from occult practices and false cults must be broken and forsaken. Every unclean thought has to be taken captive to the obedience of Christ. The mind is a, is a great battlefield until every thought is brought into captivity to the obedience of Christ, there can be no peace. 2 Corinthians 10 and 5. A passive mind permits your reasoning powers to stay in a fixed position. If you do not use your intelligence, neither will God, but the evil spirits will, well, because they require a blank brain and a passive will. Love the Lord your God with all your mind. Mark 12 and 30. Amen. Amen. Wow, that was powerful right there. And you know, um, when she gets ready to run, you got to remember, uh, Fran is a Native American Indian. Am I saying it right? Native? Um, yeah. Am I saying? Yeah. And yes, so they... So they, she, she, when she, when she talks about these things, I mean, I'm learned, I learned a lot from her. And also when I went to her, her uh, state was New Mexico. I learned a lot as well, you know, because they, they practice a lot of occult, they, they're still, they're still bound in that occult practices and, and false cultures. So, um, and, and now 
we uh what we deal with is the black greek uh culture i mean the black greek gods the lower g so that's where we were talking about sororities and sororities freemasons and and east and stars and just last week it was so crazy we were minding our business me and a few other young ladies was in a lobby or at this uh pacific place and this person just came up to us started talking to us and a gentleman and then all of a sudden he had like uh it was like this he had like six braces on his arm on each arm and he just did like this to us like threw his braces out to show all his bling bling and then turned around and said i'm a 30 degree mason i said oh my god and i want to say and i'm a 100 christian <laughs> well, see i think we got to get bold because the devil is bolder so we got to get bolder as christians you know because that was like where did that come from i we, we didn't ask that man that you know who, who he was and you know da 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 so yeah yeah that that's and and i just like now that's why i said we got to be bold like john the baptist how he was you got to repent you know what i'm saying you you bowing down to a lower g greek god you know 33 uh degree is the high rank that's the highest you can go and you done sold your soul and your children and threw them to the in the fire you know and so and then and that's why i said we had to take them to the word and the scripture it, it was is it, it was saying it and it was when we was reading about the principle of satanic uh, uh, oppression what was one of them was talking about those idols idols and false gods where was it at i'm gonna, I'm gonna show you what okay help me holy spirit because i did check it Okay, here it is. It says right here in, De in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 17, it said that they sacrifice to demons and not to God, to gods, the Lord G, God's plural. They did not know. To new gods, Lord G, new arrivals that your father did not fear. So think about that. So it, it it was like a a a, pra, a a ritual, meaning that it it went into the bloodline. So dad was someone you know involved in this occult practice. Now you know you as a, a child, um, daughter, whatever. You now you getting involved in it. So you see the pattern, and the enemy is so cunning, guys. He's so cunning. It was another scripture that I saw that pertaining to that. Um, Amen. Any questions? Go ahead. I know on page 79, it talks about the sons of gods can fall into the curse of serving other small G gods. Come. That's it. That's the one I got. That was that was it. That was the next one because it's right there. Go ahead. Talk to me. Oh, I thought you was. Come on. Talk to me. Oh, oh yeah. I thought you was going to elaborate. Said. Yeah, it's it. You know, it it is something how uh, it, like you say, it pierces. You know, the bloodline. Uh, it says, and they cause their sons and daughters to pass through the fire and practice witchcraft, and and you know, it's something how, um, you know, uh, with uh, certain uh, sororities and and uh, you know, masons and eastern stars, you know, like. They have groups, you know, like for the children to even get involved uh, and to become a, a part of the groups. And uh, that that curse is passed down uh, through the generations. And, you know, you don't understand, you know, why things are happening or not happening and, and why certain things is placed on their lives. But, you know, it clearly states, you know, that uh, they fall into that curse. And, um, you know, uh, speaking of sororities, you know, I, I just have to uh, confess um, uh, myself. Um, I um, joined a Christian uh, sorority um, based on the foundations of Jesus Christ.
based on. So the what you have to do, thank you, Holy Spirit. Ooh, Jesus, because I told you I got a, a, a sister in Christ that joined it too. And we, 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 we right now we analyzing this and we, because see, we can't justify it because see the enemy is so deceiving. So the thing about it, I will ask the person that started this Christian uh, sorority, was she a formal sorority? You follow me? Because a lot of them starting this now, since they're saved in church, now we're going to do uh, our Christian, you know, uh, fraternity, but we're going to base ours on the, on the biblical principles. So, mm -hmm. so we can have this sister, so, sister bond, uh, the network and, and, and connecting and all that. But the thing about it, if they're doing, if they, if you see any symbols of the Greek symbols, that's a red flag. If they are doing any hand gestures, uh as well that's a red flag uh and so when you get your booklet because see you play when you take that pledge that's why i said it's careful that we do not take a pledge and not knowing and getting the full understanding of it because the enemy is just little stuff in there that he would just twist and mm -hmm. then we we fall and we'll fall into it so look at the actual uh um uh, I don't know what they call it. I forgot what they call it booklet that they give you guys. Um, what they call that book? Help yeah. me. Yes, ma'am. I, I have. And um, this this particular sorority, uh, you know, we could talk about it. Um, I don't want to take up your um, Bible study uh, time, but we, we could talk about it off uh, stage. But um, it, it was uh, founded in 2002, and they were Christians. Uh, they are uh, women of God, uh, awesome women of God, and um, we can definitely talk about it. I did my research and praying um, uh, before I, um, you know, did this, and yeah, definitely looked over uh, everything with the fine tooth comb. But we can definitely uh, go deeper. Uh, Apostle, uh, I appreciate you. Amen. I love that. I love that. Yes, I, 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 I say that because we really have to be careful. You know what I'm saying? Because the enemy, remember this, guys, he's always going to duplicate things. You know what I mean? What I mean, duplicate. He's like, say, for instance, um, coming from the college aspect. You know, when they're doing their, their, um, the, you know what I'm saying, sororities and sororities, and you think about what all they do, a lot of them into drinking, a lot of them into alcoholism, all, a lot of them into, you know, uh, sleeping around. So then, so we come as Christians come along, we're going to try not to, you know, we're going to do ours better. We, we go. So that's why I we we definitely have to talk about that. And I think who else? Oh, I wish one of my sisters in Christ. I had a former one uh, that can really, she's she not here tonight. Now, Kim was a former uh, sorority as well. She actually denounced when she, you know, as she got more understanding and wisdom on this and everything, and God started dealing with her and convicting her. So, and that's why when it was talking about, we. Well, uh, well, uh, okay. All right. Amen. Amen. That, that's all enough, enough said. She she already said that. Amen. So, and that's why I said, I, you know, um, it's like when God warned us, you know, he'll give, he loves us so much. He'll give us all that we need, the do's and don'ts. And it's up to you if you want to take what is right or do we want to sit there and say well you know it's not that bad you know da, 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 justifying it all that because that's where the lord said i it's just like a game when i heard them say this this one lady said you know i'm i'm in this for life you know this is these my sisters and i'm you know i i i die for my sisters but when my spiritual sister, y'all gotta meet, y'all gotta meet her. I gotta get her on my podcast. Evangelist uh Renee G. 
she was a form of Delta. I want to make sure, but she was a form in the you know, in that sorority. And when she did the research on what sorority mean in the Hebrew language, it mean coffin. I just threw my, I just could threw my glasses across the room. I said, wow, she broke that thing down. So that, like I said, when you when you're into these different things, I look at it like God is God. What the enemy went meant for evil, God can turn it around for the good. Just like you remember when John Ramirez, he was a uh, I think thirty years satanic worshiper, and now he's a Christian, and now he know all the tricks, he know all the strategies, he know everything that Satan does and everything. And he what he doing now is telling the Christians we gotta we gotta turn I you know turn our game up. We gotta uh, step our game up. You know, and so, and that's the same with, amen. Anybody else have anything? Praise God. Amen. Always do. Okay. Yeah. So that's just like in the Gordon E. You know, he, he'll twist it and make it, you know, real, you know, like a tasty. Oh, girl. Did, did God really say he was going to kill you, girl, if you ate that forbidden fruit? He just don't want you to be, your eyes to be open and want you to be, you know. So yeah, so that's that's why we have to be careful, and especially like I said, you know, um, because the reason why I said that when that gentleman showed me that he was a, a thirty degree mason, because my little cousin was also so considered active in a sorority, you know, and so, oh yeah, so you know, I my heart goes out, my heart goes out, you know. Our people, our people, our people are perishing because of lack of knowledge. So that's why what I said with with Renee, uh, Evangelist Renee, she does her homework. She's researching um, and everything when it comes to uh, the secret society. And even now the Christians, uh, uh, fraternities and sororities, she's doing her uh, research on that. She said it don't matter if they still have those symbols, the Greek gods, Lower G and the and doing the fingers justice. That's that's got to be careful. This should be. A, I know this should be another whole class topic. I know. I know. And I and I and I will get them on here uh, so we can get that information and everything. So we we need to put it out there. You know, for real. Sound the alarm, y'all. We got to sound the trumpet. Amen. Amen. Because like I said, the enemy he aiming for the church folks. Because we're not always rooted and grounded in the world word, so we can be like the wind. We are shake when something else come along, you know. Amen. Questions? Amen. Praise God. Bless you. Come on, y'all. Talk to me. Before we exit out. Eight oh three. I just have a quick question real quick. Like, why is it so, like, sororities and fraternities, like, seem so normalized in Christian culture? Like, why is it so normalized? Wow, that's a good question. Why is it being normalized, a normal? Because, you know, that, that's just what the, the, the enemy is trying to do is, is to deceive us, to make it seem, it's just like a you're looking at it like, oh, it's shine, it glimmers, it looks like gold, but it really underneath when you get under the surface is 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 a counterfeit or your fraud. You know what I'm saying? So that's the same thing that he does. He's doing now. You, remember, I told y'all that anytime what the enemy does, he'll put Christian in front of pretty much stuff that he got his hand on. Christian yoga. Christian witch. It was a witches conference. I told y'all about. Yeah a christian witch conference where is where where is this stuff in the bible now we got christian fraternity and sororities you know what i'm saying which that has been out for a minute like she said 2002 it's been out there for a minute you know but again it's coming from the original foundation of the it, the, the, the 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 ring leader of masonry Eastern Star. See, that's that's the that's the that's the original. Uh, you know what I'm saying? That was the originated right there. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Anybody? Go ahead. Y'all, we ain't. Anybody else? Come on, talk to me. Go ahead. 
Go ahead, friend. <laughs> okay, thank you, Apostle. Um, uh, my dad, um, now that I have more knowledge of the prophetic, my dad was a seer. And, you know, the this whole sorority and, and you know, pledging, it's no different than the Native American culture where, um, you know, they had peyote meetings. And my dad, at one point, um, he was pointing out to us the, that he saw a bat, you know, how a bat has wings and it was sitting in a, in a position where the bat, um, his wings were wrapped in a circle and that peyote circle is, is, is like a bat. So when the circ when the bat had his wings in a circle, that's what made the teepee, you know how the teepees are round? He saw a bat with his arms wrapped around that peyote ceremony. And that's what he saw in the spirit. So now that I have more understanding and knowledge of seers and dreamers and, and, and um, prophets, I remember one time he had described that to me and in the middle, there's a fireplace and he saw snakes all wrapped up in, and, 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 um, the snakes were like fire. So, so they do a lot of their traditional ceremonies at night between the hours of nine and five o'clock in the morning which is the witching hour, which is the hour. Come on, 12 to midnight to 3 a.m., which is hour, come on. Yes, the witching hour. So so a lot of this, when, you know, my, my people, um, they mix a lot of that. And I remember one time he had mentioned to me that they took the Bible into that peyote meeting and put Christian on it. And I remember my dad telling me about that. And he said, you know, it was such an abomination that it was like, you know, slapping the Bible in, 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 in God's face. And I remember, but this was way before I even came to healing and many ministries. And now that I think about it, my dad is a seer. And, and now that, you know, where in the book it, it describes you know all these spirits the deceiving spirits the spirit of disobedience the world bondage divination idolatry prostitution that's just like god showing adam you know name name the animals and he was naming the animals while we're in that same situation god is showing us this is the spirit of idolatry. This is the spirit of the world. This is the spirit of bondage. This is the spirit of sleep. The same way God was teaching Adam to name the animals. He's teaching us. This is the unclean spirit of idolatry. This is the spirit of anger. This is the spirit of infirmity. Because if we can recognize it, if we can see it, the principalities that were built up in our own mind. And Liz, this is what I was hearing in the spirit when you said, why is this normalized? It is the principality, the principalities that are built up in our minds that that the enemy says, this is, this is normal. This is what's been passed down through generation through generation. This is what's been passed down through the bloodline. As long as Christian is written in front of it, it is a principality of of the region, the region of your mind, the region of your culture, the region of who you are, the region of, of what speaks against that God made you in the image of who he is. So if those strongholds and those principalities and those wilds and those wickedness are destroyed and dismantled, we get to learn what is the root of it, the spirit of, 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 of brokenness, the spirit of anger, the spirit of lies, the spirit, the evil spirit. When we get down to the root of it, we dismantle it. That's why God says, renew your mind 
mind. He's after the mind. If he can infiltrate your mind and deceive you and tell you this is this is like God. Did God say this is like it? And so many people, their their mind is camouflaged. Their mind, their, there's mirrors in front of it. The fogginess, the 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 lightness, and that's what my people say. That's what they say. Well, we're praying to the same God with who we're worshiping. No, it's not because of the principality and the region of their mind that the enemy has built over time, over generation and generation, because the enemy from the beginning of time knows how to build those infrastructures. He knows how to build those principalities. He knows how to build those strongholds. But just like as the man at the pool of Bethesda, when God said, do you really want to be healed? He was telling him, do you really want me to break down that infrastructure in your mind? And when he did that, he got up, he rose and he walked. He walked and he went to the temple. And that's what we do as believers. We walk to the temple. We go to the temple and we worship in spirit and in truth. And then he saw the man that, that he healed at the, the pool of Bethesda. And he said, why are you still sinning? His mind, he he was free, but in his mind, he was still thinking like a slave, a slave that was still that was still uh, crippled and was still sitting at the pool. If you are free and and free and God has freed you, you have to walk it out and say, "My mind is free. I will think of the of the things of of the kingdom that I will I will tear down those infrastructures that those those strongholds that He built in my mind. Although I am walking, although I see the truth, although He has healed me although he has told me pick up your mat and walk i will also free my mind my mind will be renewed those structures will be broken that i will speak the goodness of the lord i will speak of my testimony my testimony will will free others that the infrastructure that has been built in my mind will be cast down and those principalities will be cast down in my mind in jesus mighty name god we thank you hallelujah jesus we thank you father god we thank you for the freedom we thank you for the for the protection of our mind god that we put on the mind of christ we have the mind of christ god that you father god are the center of our mind in jesus mighty name god we thank you for this lesson we thank you that we see the enemy's tactics that you are showing us you're showing us father god just like you taught adam in jesus name that this is of the enemy this is of the darkness this is what he says this is what he shows you this is what he wants to build in jesus mighty name we tear it down and we bring it to the obedience to the to the word of god in jesus mighty name amen and amen hallelujah Oh my baba Hey, you better cut it with the sword of the spirit. Uproot it in Jesus' name. My my God. Woo, I felt that breakthrough. I felt the uh, layers being taken off. Come on. The scales of the eyes is being oh God. Hey God, do it, God. Do it, God. Oh God. He I love it. I love it. Man. Friend, I, I tell him, I knew she, I already knew it. She was going to take, take and run with it because we have been teaching this and teaching this. Amen. Amen. So to God be the glory, you know, you, and, and people say, well, don't judge a possible. Let me say this. If you are a Christian, guess what? I can judge your fruits. Yes, I can judge the fruits. Amen. So yeah. Amen. So at, to God be the glory. So that was a blessing. Amen hallelujah yes we'll talk we'll talk uh la la god bless god bless and actually i'm gonna send you a video as well like one of my spiritual sisters i told you about that's her that's her ministry that's all she does um and she does deliverance too so that's why we connected you know when i found her on face uh youtube i found her on youtube and uh, then I, I started following her on facebook and we end up connecting and talking and everything and so uh to god be the glory because 
uh, that's what frankly speaking do. We 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 tries to uh, bring things, shine a light, and uh, to the uh, to the kingdom of darkness. We 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 that's what we there to do, you know, um, and and not allow our people to perish, you know, because of that lack of knowledge. So, you know, I thank God for you guys. You know, I do. I thank God for Fran. She has been a faithful serving for the ministry like she said she's in a whole different country and I, I never met her but i got the honor to meet her her sister which came into the ministry for a season and as well and so she brought her um she brought her sister in so i just see god doing things with our family bringing our family in amen uh and and what she was just saying that generational curse you know, we, we, we got to we gotta pull our kids out of the fire. We got to pull our kids off of those evil altars and those blood and those blood covenants that we have have pretty much engaged in out of ignorance. You know, so, yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So y'all, y'all, y'all know how I feel about our kids right now, because I told you I, I wasn't expecting getting a phone call. Uh, 37 years old, you know, a, co a cousin OD. OD. So, um. So God be the glory, guys. So we're gonna go ahead. Oh, I lost my earring. Um, and pray out, pray out, uh, Doctor uh, uh, Lala, if you don't mind, do the pleasure of that. Let me say this, guys, before I close. Make sure you guys, you know, we got an upcoming uh, women's retreat, fresh anointing coming up July the seventh, uh, fourteenth through the sixteenth. You know that is uh two hundred and seventy dollars. That's including the uh the lodge, the meals, and the workshops. That's double occupancy. So if you go a private room, that'll be 300 uh, for the whole weekend uh, as well. So guys, we're gonna be in Florence and Missouri. Uh, so that, that's gonna be a you know hop, skip and jump. And I tell you guys, it is going to be a, um, I'm telling you, you're not gonna go, you're not, you're gonna, you're gonna, I'm telling you, you come in one way, but you ain't gonna lead the same way. I'm just gonna tell y'all. Y'all going to be free. I, I told you one, one young lady walked in there with a, uh, what was it? What I said? Crutches. What you call a, a, what the thing you walk with? Yeah. Uh, not a crutch, but what, what big mama always had? Walking stick. Walker? What is it? Are you thinking no, about a, a walker? stick. Cane. 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 No, it was, it was a cane. So she came in with a cane and she left without the cane. <laughs> Amen. She had swelling of the uh, feet and everything, uh, legs, and uh, God, and that whole weekend still began to uh, heal her, and to God be the glory. So, you know, we 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 expect God to do miracles, signs, wonders, and miracles, and we supposed to be doing greater things in his name. Amen. So to God be the glory. All right. Any other questions, you guys? And continue keeping me in your prayer, if you would be so kind. Amen. To God be the glory. Amen. And me and Deacon Reginald McCoy. All right. All right. All right. Let's do it. Most gracious and everlasting Father God, we just thank you for this couple of hours, oh God, that you gave us, oh God, to study your word, oh God, and to bless your people, oh God. We thank you for this awesome ministry, oh God. We thank you for this book that you have given us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We thank you for this book, oh God, the to destroy the works of the enemy, oh God. We thank you for opening up our eyes and our ears, oh God, to hear your voice and to hear your word, oh God, and to receive it, oh God. In the name of Jesus, we say thank you, oh God. We thank you for what our ears heard, our hearts have felt, oh God. And we just bless your holy name on tonight, oh God. We magnify your name. We lift your name on how, oh God, for there is none like you, oh God. Hallelujah. We bless your holy name. Hallelujah, oh God. We bless your name, oh God. We give your name praise. Glory to God, for there is none like you, oh God. We glorify your name, oh God. We magnify you and we worship you on tonight, oh God. Hallelujah. We just thank you, oh God, for what you've given us on tonight, oh God. And God, we bless you and we thank you. We thank you for Apostle McCoy, God, and we thank you for Pastor Fran, oh God, and we thank you for everyone that heard 
your word on tonight, oh God. And oh God, we receive your word, oh God. And we will give your name all the praises, all the glory and all the honor, oh God. What the devil meant for evil, oh God. You turned it for our good, God. And we thank you and we will be forever grateful and to give your name all the praise, the glory and the honor. And this we ask in Jesus' name and for your glory, we give you all the praise. Amen. And amen. Ooh, amen. My God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus. Bless Thank his name, God. God. He's Hallelujah. worthy. He's worthy, yes, God. Yes, Ooh, you, we Jesus. bow down to Hallelujah. you, God. Hallelujah. He said Hallelujah. it. Every knee I bow and every yeah, tongue yeah, confess yeah. that you yeah. are God. You are yeah. God. You yeah. are God. Yeah. Oh, he yeah. reigns. Yeah. He yeah. reigns. Yeah. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. He reigns. Yes. Oh yes. Lord, we yes. thank you, Father. Yes. Oh God, yes. hey, Baba, Baba, Shoo, Baba, 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 Baba,